Hello my friends, welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to talk about the difference between the Trustmaster TGT and the TGT2. There is not a lot of information going around about the difference between these two. So I just, uh, I never had the two um, uh, here, but uh, recently I was able to buy one and I came to a staggering conclusion. Since I did my first review about the TGT almost a year ago, I have always been fascinated by the TGT2 and especially the part of those 23,000 hours of R&D that have been done to make the second incarnation better than the first. I also made a few errors in that review that I want to correct in this video and to make a proper comparison with both wheels side by side. So the pedals is something that um, I didn't have correct in my initial review because um, when I bought my first TGT1 it didn't have the standard pedals with it, uh, this one does. So the pedals of the TG TGT are a bit different than the normal T3PA pedals. They have the um, the pedals, the pedals themselves are made out of metal in the TGT2 uh, version which is much more sturdy. Apart from the pedals being made out of metal, uh, everything is the same like the regular T3PA pedals. It uses potentiometers to measure the travel of the pedal when you brake. Uh, this technology has been surpassed by both hall sensors and load cell for both accuracy and lifespan, so nothing special there. The ensemble looks cheap, even with the now aluminium uh, pedal holders and faces. The pedal faces can be moved slightly horizontally and vertically and can be tilted a bit by using the spaces between the faces and the pedals themselves. Braking with these pedals is not an immersive uh, sensation. However, the cone mod does make it a bit better by shortening the travel and making the braking more progressive towards the maximum. I would really recommend using the option on these pedals. The TGT doesn't have a brand printing on the pedal base. However, the TGT2 has the branding on the front. Something else which I noticed is, of course, the uh, the metal ring around uh, the ring base in the front of the ring base. Um, so that's a big difference. You have the the black um, plastic on the TGT one, and we have like more the the chromed or the brushed aluminium one uh, on the um, uh, on the TGT two. Another difference uh, that I can point out is that the grill on the front for the TDFB. It has the nice logo for, for the TGT2 on it and it doesn't have that on the TGT. The rest of the body is quite neutral. I guess the design of the G TGT2 can be called an upgrade. Not only the material but also the color of the disc in front brings a huge difference in the perception. Sure, most of the base still remains plastic but at least it doesn't look like one big black blob anymore on the front. The adding of the TGT to brand on the front with the white and red surely also brightens it up slightly. The grille on the back is a nice touch. Again, it breaks with the complete stealth appearance of the TGT. There is always a lot of comment on how the uh, Trustmaster bases look and frequently they are the center of mockery because of the plastic casing. But to be fair, the plastic is very smooth and since there have been very few cases of these bases overheating, it doesn't stand in the way of functionality. The last part of the set is the steering wheel. Now there I stated that they used another chrome paint, but that doesn't seem to be the case when I actually put them side by side. The rims look exactly the same, there is no extra branding, the stitching seemed the same, the buttons still feel mechanical and the rotary buttons are still a joy for the thumbs. I have grown to appreciate this rim the last year. No excessive lights or displays, just a leather circle that feels good to the touch. Something that would fit in any sports car. The only downside of it is the size with 28 cm. It could have used another 2 cm for my personal taste. For the rest this is a decent rim. Internally there are two added functionalities and one change that should improve the driving experience and should explain at least 22,500 hours of R&D. There is TDCC which stands for Drift Curve Calculation. It states on the Gran Turismo website that the steering wheel and the vehicle will react at any moment in the game. 
Somehow I already thought that was implemented because when I turn the wheel left, my car goes left. Further, the site states that it calculates the drifting angle in real time via a unique technique. From that explanation and the picture they published to clarify it, I am assuming lower input lag since the wheelbase does some calculation itself. Of course, how do you measure this? A second new functionality is the TRTF system. This seems to shorten the calculation times in force feedback. Due to calculations in uh, the built-in processor, it should counter any delays coming from the game itself. Again, I have something like, yes, that sounds perfect, I want it, but how will I actually notice this in a game? The last change between TGT2 and 1 is the TAECQ certifying of the printed circuit boards used. Okay, always good to be ISO compliant, I guess, but aside from Trustmaster saying they used very poor quality standard PCBs in a TGT1, which I don't think they did, I don't expect this was uh, a major change. For the end user itself, there doesn't seem to change a lot. So this is a TGT1, it features a TDFB. If you haven't seen a video of me before, here is the, the moment that I explain what TDFB is. Um, TDFB is uh, the transducer in the TGT, it, it vibrates, it gives XR vibration and this vibration you can feel it in the steering wheel so when you go straight instead of feeling nothing at all you can feel a, a very subtle vibration in the steering wheel. The same goes for the, the pedal base so your uh, cockpit it will uh, resonate with the uh, transducer as well and you can feel it in the pedal base too. So the TDFB, very subtle vibration. Um, I have been racing on PC with the BeamNG uh, game and so I put it on the other um, setting in TGT and then I came back to PlayStation I immediately felt something was off when I was driving. So it is very subtle but when it's gone you really miss it too. And that is what makes this uh, TGT base so strong in my eyes, that it has that, that little extra feature that makes it special. For force, well, you have uh, six Newton meters um, of force in this one. It's enough. It's enough. Eh? For most people, this is this is this is even uh, too much for for some people. For me, this is enough. Um, you have nice nice feeling with the road. I feel you can really drive also very precise. Yeah, but I do have a feeling that the TDFB is less powerful in this base, which is almost impossible. Of course, I'm not a, a pro, um, a pro racing driver. Perhaps uh, other people that have more feeling in their hands might uh, discover a few differences. Uh, between the TGT2 and the TGT, but for me, the force is the same. Uh, the, f the, the the detail detail feels the same. The smoothness feels the same. Yeah, everything feels the same. I ju I, I just wonder where the R&D that they put in this base is applied. In conclusion, I guess you can say that there is a little to no noticeable difference between both the TGT and TGT2, and especially not in such a degree that the average sim driver will feel the difference. I tried to find user experiences of people that had tried both bases but didn't come up with much result. So the conclusion from this video yeah, Trustmaster advertises like many companies in a very populistic way, their latest direct drive fiasco included. 
What I may say sounds uh, very bold, but for me the development and release of the TGT2 was just a shameless attempt to boost the sales of their aging technology a bit more before the announcement of Fanatec becoming the next supplier of Polyphony Digital. Those 23,000 hours uh, they claim to have uh, invested in R&D were mostly plans on how to beat more money out of the consumers and make sure the market became smaller for their new mainstream rival Fanatec. And so the TGT2 was brought with much furore but way too little changes to the initial hardware. I can't blame them. I think the same happened to Logitech with their bases but at least Logitech did it with some dignity in my opinion. Nonetheless, the TGT remains a fantastic base and I have been using it for about a year now and yeah, I'm not planning on changing it soon. I released this video now because with all the new T818s uh, that are being delivered, we can see some good deals appearing on a secondhand market soon. Just don't overpay for TGT2 when you can have a TGT1. Thank you all for watching, uh, leave a free like or subscribe if you want to see some more videos and see you all next video.